Uh, so the learning goal for this video, it's a bit of a mouthful here, using the double derivative to determine the nature of turning points. Uh, now you'll remember that uh, we've already looked at this video here where we looked at the original function and then the derivative and then the double derivative. Uh, we're going to take some cues from this uh, image or these images to work out some stuff with this one. So first of all we want to determine the nature of the turning points. In other words we're asking the question is the turning point a maximum or is it a minimum? Is the turning point a maximum or is it a minimum? Max, minimum. Uh, so, if we're going to determine the nature of the turning points, first we probably need to know where the turning points are. So, you guys have had lots of practice with that. In order to find where the turning points are, we just need to do f dash of x. Sorry, that little bit of yellow shouldn't be there. That's not Okay, oh, it's even worse now, great. Okay, so uh, first thing we need to do is find the derivative of that. Uh, so that's pretty straightforward, uh, I hope. And then if we want to know where the turning points are, we just need to let f dash x equal zero and solve. So zero equals 3x squared plus 3x minus 36. Now you guys can solve this any way you want. Um, I assume most of us are going to solve using the graphics calculator. And it should give you two turning points. Uh, turning point x equals x equals negative 4 and x equals 3. Okay, I just want to take a moment here because I know that you guys go through the motions of this a lot, but you might not really realise what you're doing. So, here's our function, x cubed plus 1.5x squared minus 36x. We could say that it looks something like this. And then when we found uh, the derivative this is the function that pops out and it told us that the turning points are these things here. Oops. The turning points are these things here. Now in this case it was actually the turning points were more like this where this is um, negative 4 and this is 3. At least I think that was right. Yeah. So the turning points were there and there. Which means that our function has turning points, our cubic function has turning points there and there. Okay, so that's what we've done so far. So now that we know that our turning points are at negative 4 and uh, 3, we need to determine the nature of those turning points. Now I'll just pull up our textbook um, so you can see what we've done, because we've determined the nature of turning points before, but we've done it in a really ugly way. You should remember doing uh, these horrible gradient tables to determine the nature of a turning point. So you can see this one tells us that it was uh, a maximum here and a minimum here. Um, we're going to do away with that and we're going to do something much, much easier. Okay, so we're going to determine the nature of uh, this turning point here, the uh, x equals negative 4 first. Uh, I'll, do it, I'll do that one and then I'll show you on our pictures why it's working. Now first of all we need to know what the double derivative is, so f double dash x, now that's going to be the derivative of this, which is going to be 6x plus 3, and then I'm going to sub negative 4 for x, I'm going to put negative 4 in here, now when I do that, 6 times negative 4 plus 3, uh, that's going to be negative 24 plus 3, that's going to be negative 21. Now we don't actually care what the number is, we don't care whether that's negative 21 or negative a million or negative 0.5, what we care about is the sign, it's negative. Let's go back to our picture. Now what we're doing is uh, trying to determine the nature of this turning point. So 
If I draw a line all the way through there, all the way down, it grows through the x-axis, sorry, the uh, root of our f dash x, and then keep going down. You can see that it meets our linear equation below the x-axis when y is negative. Okay? Now, what we can do is now go in reverse, and we can say that if the second derivative's y value is negative at a turning point, then that turning point must be a maximum. Okay, that was pretty convoluted, so we'll write that down right here. F double dash x is less than zero, i.e. negative something, at x equals negative 4, therefore it's a maximum. Okay, hopefully you can see what's coming next. We can determine the nature of x equals 3 in the same way. We know that it's a turning point. Let's see if it's a maximum or a minimum. So we use our second derivative test equals 6x plus 3. We sub. Uh, sorry, guys, that's a mess. We sub 3 for x. And we'll get 6 times 3 plus 3, which is 21. Now, it doesn't matter what number it is again, but it is positive. So what we can say now, in our, to sum this whole thing up, we can say that f double dash x is greater than 0 at x equals uh, 3. Therefore, it's a minimum. And you can see that back, back here. If something's greater than as it is here, if we move up here, you can see that that's a minimum. If we look again at this one, you can see that here's our minimum in this function, and as you go through into the second derivative, you can see that our y value is positive in our second derivative. Okay, uh, this has been pretty complicated. But once you've practiced a couple, make sure you talk to me if, you're not, if it's not making sense, we'll talk about it in class. But once you've practiced a couple, you'll see that it is way better than this horrible thing that you used to do, this horrible gradient table. Much, much easier, much, much simpler. Using the double derivative to determine the nature of turning points.